Welcome to this Wise Owl DAX4 Power BI tutorial. In this part of the series, we're going to be looking at how to work with blanks in your calculated columns. We'll start by explaining how to test for blanks in a column using the isBlank function, and then explain how you can test if something is equal to blank using the blank function. We'll also explain why that was probably a terrible idea, and explain how to use the strictly equal to operator to get around a few of the problems it might cause. We'll also show you what happens when you involve blanks in basic arithmetic, and then how to work with blanks and text. So let's get started. To get started, I've created a new report, and as usual, the first thing I'll do is import some data from an Excel workbook. So I'll click on the Import Data from Excel button on the canvas, and then when I've browsed to the location of that file, I can double click on it to begin importing it. As usual, I'll drop a link in the video description so you can download a copy of this same movie's workbook and follow along with the video. I'll check the box next to the only worksheet in that workbook, and then click the Load button to import all of its data into this report's data model. When that's finished, we'll head over to the data view so that when we start creating our calculated columns, we'll be able to see the results. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the budget and the box office columns. These two columns have lots of missing data, and if I scroll down far enough in the data view, you'll start to see some of those empty cells appearing. These empty cells are referred to as blank in DAX, and you'll see the value blank appear if you click the drop down arrow at the top of the budget or the box office column. Blank is an option you can select in the filter list. Blank is similar in concept, although not identical, to the concept of null in SQL. There are a few subtle differences about the way blanks behave in DAX compared to the way nulls behave in SQL, so there are a couple of things that could trip you up if you're familiar with SQL. One of the simplest things we can do with blanks is test if the value of a column is equal to a blank. So to demonstrate that, let's create a label for our films based on whether or not the budget column has a value. So we'll assume that if there is a value in the budget column, that budget has been approved by the film studio, but if the value of the budget column is blank, then the budget hasn't been approved. So let's create a new column in this table. I'll click the new column button, and then let's zoom in so you can see what I'm about to write. And then I'll give the column a sensible name. Let's call this one budget approval or budget approval status, maybe something along those lines. And we'll use an if function to begin with. So I'll type in if, open some round brackets, and then head down to the next line. Now there are a couple of ways of testing whether something is blank in DAX, but the most reliable way to do it is to use the dedicated function called is blank. So I'm going to say is b and then hit the tab key to type in the rest of that function name. Then I can refer to the budget column and then close around brackets and that function will return either true or false. I'll type in a comma and then shift and enter to head down to the next line. And if the budget is blank, then I'm going to say that it's not yet approved or pending or something along those lines. So in some double quotes, the word pending, follow that with a comma and then shift and enter. And in some more double quotes, I'll type in the word approved, shift and enter, and then close the round brackets. If I press enter now to create that formula, we should see that any budget or any film with a budget value filled in says approved. If I scroll down far enough, I ought to find some budgets that are now pending. As usual, the point of creating these calculated columns is usually so that you can use them in some way in your report visuals. So let's just demonstrate that quickly by heading back to the report view. We'll insert a basic clustered column chart. And in there, I'm going to add the genre field to the axis bucket. I'll add the runtime field to the values bucket and choose to show the average runtime rather than the sum. And then if I just increase the size of that chart, I can finally drag my new budget approval status column into the legend box so that I can slice up my films based on whether their budgets have been approved or not. Now there is another way that you can test if something is blank in DAX, and this is one of the first ways that blanks can trip you up. So to demonstrate that, let's head back to the data view, and I'd like to create a similar category column, but this time based on the box office field. So I'd like to assume that the box office status could be either incomplete or final. 
and if the value of box office is blank, then I'm going to mark it as incomplete. So let's create another new column and we're going to start it in a similar way. Let's give it a sensible name. I'll call this one box office status or something along those lines and make this equal to if open some round brackets and then shift and enter. So this time to test whether the box office is blank, I'm not going to use the is blank function. I'm going to refer to the box office column and then ask if it is equal to and then refer to the blank function, which returns a blank. Now, if you come from an SQL background, this will be completely unnatural to you. You don't write if something equals null in SQL. And we shouldn't really be writing it here in DAX either. And I'll show you why in a moment. But just to show you that misleadingly this can work, if I type in a comma at the end of this and then press shift and enter, and then in some double quotes, I'm going to call this one, uh, what should we call it? What did I say? Incomplete, didn't I? So incomplete if it's blank. Otherwise, it will be final. OK, so we'll close the round brackets and hit enter. And we will indeed now return a list of values. We'll see final where the box office value does have a value. If I scroll down far enough, we'll find the word incomplete when box office is blank. And again, if we headed back to the report view, we could perhaps switch out our budget approval status in the legend for our new box office status in the legend and see that we can divide our films up into those different categories just as easily. So this does all appear to work quite nicely. But there is one major potential problem lying in wait for you if you try to test for blanks in the way we just have. And it's all to do with what values DAX considers to be blank when you use a single equals operator like this. To demonstrate this, I think it's easiest to create a slightly nonsensical example. I'm going to temporarily replace the reference to the box office column with a reference to the Oscar nominations or the movies nominations column. So we're saying movies nominations equals blank. Now, looking at the list at the moment, at the top of the list, at least, there are lots of zeros. Zero in my book, at least, is a value. It's definitely not blank. However, if we update our formula by clicking the tick or pressing enter, we'll see that with a single equals operator like this, DAX considers the zero to be equivalent to a blank and produces incomplete as the result. There will be some final results a bit further down where the value of the nominations is more than zero, but any zeros are treated as incomplete. And that's a potentially disastrous thing to happen if you were assuming that zeros and blanks are different. So there's a couple of solutions in DAX. One way, rather than using the equal to operator, is to use the strictly equal to operator. And to make that happen, you can just add an extra equal sign to add it to the first. So movies nominations is strictly equal to a blank. If we update the formula again now, we'll find that zero is treated as an actual value, as it should be, and not treated as blank. So we get the word final instead of incomplete. You can see a similar effect when you're testing if something is equal to zero. So let's just switch our column reference from nominations back to box office and then go back to a single equals operator and check if it's equal to zero. If I click the tick or press enter to update my formula and then scroll downwards, we'll see that when we reach some films whose box office is blank, they're actually described as incomplete. So again, the blank and the zero are, be tr are being treated as equivalent to each other. So again, the strictly equal to operator comes in handy here. Let's say double equals zero click the tick again and this time we'll find if we scroll downwards and find some blank box offices they're now described as final rather than incomplete. Just to set this example back to the way it should be rather than having to worry about whether to use equals or strictly equal to the best policy here I think if you're trying to test if something is blank use the function that's designed precisely to do that. So we'll wrap the is blank function around the movie's box office and then click the tick or press enter to update the formula and get the right final result. Now, as well as being able to treat a zero as equivalent to a blank in a logical expression, DAX can also treat a blank as equivalent to zero in an arithmetic expression. 
So to demonstrate that, what we'll do is try to calculate the net profit for our films by subtracting budget from box office. Let's create a new column and I'll give it a short name. Let's just call this one net and I'll make this equal to box office minus budget. And if I hit enter, at the top of the list at least, it appears that we have some sensible results. I'm not going to perform the mental arithmetic to check that that's correct. I will trust DAX enough to assume that it's given me the correct answers here. But if I start scrolling downwards and I start to encounter films which have either a budget and no box office or a box office and no budget, we'll see things work a little differently to the way you might expect. So here's a film that has a box office with no budget, and you'll see that the net is the same as the box office, so we've effectively subtracted zero from the box office. If we look a little further down, here's a film with a budget and no box office. We've got the negative value of the budget, so we've basically done zero minus the budget. Again, if you're familiar with SQL, this will be a very unnatural state of affairs. You would expect any expression like this, which involves a null in SQL, to result in a null here. But we're not returning blanks in DAX when a blank gets fed into this arithmetic expression. So again, this situation could cause potentially disastrous problems for your final report. The figures we have in this net column aren't really the actual net when the film doesn't have either a budget or a box office. So once again, we could use an if function and the isBlank function to come to our rescue. Let's edit this expression. I'm going to add a couple of blank lines. I'll hold down the shift key and press enter a couple of times to shift that expression down to line number three. And then after the equals operator, let's say if open some round brackets and then on the next line, indent the code one space using the tab key. I want to check if either the budget is blank or the box office is blank, then return a blank as my answer. So I'm going to use the is blank function twice in this logical test. I'll test first of all is blank box office and then use the or operator, which you may remember from an earlier video, the double vertical bars, and then say is blank budget. Close around brackets and type in a comma. And on the next line, if either of those two conditions are true, I want to return a blank as the result of this formula. So you can use the blank function to return a blank value, as well as use it to test if something is equal to blank. I'll type in a comma at the end of that line there, and then on line number four now, I'll indent this expression, head to the end of that line, press shift and enter, close the round brackets, and then press enter to update the expression. So this time, if we scroll downwards and we find any film which has either a budget or a box office that's blank, we will now find that the result of that expression is also a blank. Now there is a slightly more elegant way we could have written this particular expression. With an if function in DAX, you can omit the third and final result if false parameter to return a blank automatically. But in order to make that work, we just have to modify the way our logical test works. So I'm going to modify the logical test. I might need to zoom out a little bit to fit it all onto a single line. I'm going to wrap this up in a not function to flip a true to a false or a false to a true. So not open round brackets and then close the round brackets just before the comma at the end of that line. Then I can get rid of line number three completely. So if the box office and the budget are not blank, then I'll subtract budget from box office. I've omitted the third parameter, result if false, so that will automatically return a blank if this condition is not true. So I can update the formula by pressing enter and I'll end up with the same end results, just in a slightly more succinct way. So it's a slightly more elegant way to write that expression. Next, let's look at how blanks work with text. To do this, we'll switch to the country column. Now there is one blank value in the country column. I can make this appear at the top of the list by sorting this column in ascending order. And you'll see the film with its fairly appropriate title, I suppose, sitting at the top of this list. Now that definitely is a blank. Again, if I click in the drop down arrow there, there's the blank option in the filter list. And if I choose to show only the blanks from the filter list, that's the film that I get. So let's just remove that filter and bring everything back. 
Just like a blank can be evaluated as a zero, when you're comparing text values, you can treat an empty string as a blank as well, which could cause problems. So just to demonstrate that, let's create a new column. I want to eventually build up to creating a description for each film that describes which country it was made in. So I'll call this column made in. And then just to demonstrate the equivalence of empty strings with blanks, let's say if, and then I'm going to test if the country column is equal to an empty string. Then I want to show the word, what should we say, unknown. Otherwise, I want to show the name of the country, so I can refer to the country field again. OK, so this, as we've established, is not actually an empty string, it's a blank. However, when we enter that formula, you'll see that we get the word unknown, so the blank is being equated to an empty string. Again, the strictly equals operator is one way to get around that if that's not the type of evaluation you wanted. So if I add an extra equal sign to get the strictly equal to operator, I can click the tick and now I'll see that I return a blank this time. Alternatively, as usual, we could check explicitly for a blank using the isBlank function. So I'm going to wrap the isBlank function around this movie's country column reference. And if we then update the formula one more time, we'll get the correct result, safely testing if something is blank. Finally, let's have a look at what happens when you concatenate a blank value into a longer string. So I'm going to get rid of the if function we've created in this column and replace this with a simpler concatenation. I want to concatenate the title of the film with the phrase was made in, followed by the name of the country. So I'll just head down to the next line to start this one to give myself a bit more space and start by referring to the title field. Use the ampersand to concatenate that with was made in, in some double quotes, and then concatenate that with the country field. If I press enter at that point, you'll see that you can safely concatenate a blank into a string without affecting the rest of the string. But that looks a bit rubbish. I'd like to put a replacement keyword in there. If the movie's country is blank, I want the phrase unknown or some unknown mysterious country or something else other than a blank. One way to do that would be to put back in the if function we've just deleted. So we could check if is blank movie's country. In fact, rather than describe it, let's do it. So we could say if, open some round brackets, is blank movies country, followed by a comma, then we could place the phrase unknown, and then we don't need to bother with the final third parameter, so let's just close the round brackets and then click the tick. Okay, so no country for all men was made in unknown. We could improve on that description, of course. The only problem I have with this is it's a little inelegant. We don't really need to have such a complex combination of if and is blank functions to do this. There's a neater, simpler function you can use in DAX called Coalesce. Coalesce may be familiar to you if you've used it in SQL before, and it performs the same basic function. The idea behind the Coalesce function, let's get rid of if and is blank and replace that with Coalesce and then get rid of the extra closed round brackets in the middle there. So the idea behind Coalesce is that you put in a list of values. We don't have to stick at two. We could continue adding more and more values to this comma separated list. And what you end up with is the first one of those values that is not blank. So if I update this formula, I get the same end result. When it comes to things like Crocodile Dundee, it goes to the country column first and finds that the country is not blank. So I get the word Australia. When it goes for no country for old men, it goes to the country column first, it finds that that is blank, so then it moves on to the next argument, it finds that unknown is not blank, so it adds the word unknown there instead. So there you go, there's a bit of background information about working with blanks in DAX. Hope you found that one useful, we'll be revisiting some of these ideas as we work further through the tutorial series. Thanks very much for watching, we'll see you next time.